I guess there's three ways of thinking about, uh, three stages of thinking about development assessment. So there's a development application process, there's the assessment of the impacts of that development proposal, and then there's a decision whether or not to approve the development. Development assessment is being dealt with under the new planning system uh, by streamlining development assessment and approval. So that's one of the five main areas that the government is trying to emphasise in its white paper. So what does that mean in practice? Well, a lot of the um, methods of development assessment that are in the current system will be brought over, but perhaps the key uh, big change that's happening in the development assessment area is what's called code assessed development. So that code assessed development process will mean for a wide range of residential, commercial and industrial buildings that the standards for those developments will be set up front uh, rather than uh, requests for community consultation and merit assessment um, by the local council or by a panel. So instead of having that process of engagement at the, the bottom end of the process where a community can talk about an individual development, those uh, standards will be set at the more the strategic end up front and the community will be uh, encouraged to get engaged in setting those, uh, those standards up front. It's very important that the community does get engaged up front in setting those standards if code assessed development becomes a reality in the new planning system. If they don't, they won't have an opportunity um, to have a say when a development is going up in their neighbourhood. So they may have the opportunity to be notified, they may get something in the mail saying this development has been proposed, but unlike the current system where the community has an opportunity to then write to their local council or the relevant panel and say these are my concerns about the development or these are the things that I want addressed. They won't have that opportunity if it's code assessed and it's complying with those codes because the government is saying those standards will be set up front. EDO New South Wales welcomes the government's commitment to upfront engagement and the view that the community really needs to own the planning system and take ownership of the standards that are assessed. So it is positive to see the government calling for upfront community engagement. How we get to that level of engagement remains to be seen. There's not a lot of detail in the white paper as to uh, you know, baseline requirements of community consultation. Uh, a, lot of that, a lot of that detail is yet to be developed. So we certainly look forward to uh, further engagement from the government and novel ways of engagement that go beyond the traditional means. In terms of EDO New South Wales's concerns in relation to development assessment under the white paper, we're concerned that the government has set an 80% target for code accessible and exempt and complying development. Um, that's really flipping the system around um, to mean that in a lot of cases individuals won't get a say on developments that are happening in their area and setting a, a target like 80% uh, this early on means that the, the community hasn't necessarily come to grips with what code accessible development this brave new system will mean. So I think before the targets are set there needs to be more community engagement around um, what are the limits of code accessible development, when does the community think that, that code accessible development is appropriate and what sort of safeguards are needed to protect the environment and make sure that the community has a say. The white paper doesn't really give an indication of minimum environmental protections, uh, particularly under code assessment, for example. So we've said that uh, code assessment should be limited to low risk and low impact development and that there should be limitations or exclusions on when something like code assessment does apply. Um, for example, we would say that uh, code assessment shouldn't be applicable to environmentally sensitive areas shouldn't be applicable to high conservation value areas or areas that are of particular sensitivity for heritage conservation or cultural heritage reasons. So that's one safeguard that we are suggesting um, is required. There also needs to be a process, I suppose, of uh, we don't want a system where the community uh, gets to the point where they get a letter in the mail saying this development's going up in your neighbourhood and the same level of frustration and anxiety that might be caused by that now we don't want that to be happening down the track, um, so we don't want people to not be engaged at that early stage and the first that they hear about this sort of thing is when they get a letter in the mail because that'll be too late for the community to really have a say on what standards apply to that development if it's going to be code assessed. So in some ways there needs to be a way to capture 
the community feedback when there is a problem with the codes and to make sure that they're reviewed regularly and that they're responsive to community concerns, either about community engagement or about protection of the environment. It's really important that the community gets engaged at this stage. The white paper is uh, the process of, um, of 18 months that's gone before and now is really the time for communities to pay attention and to get involved in the planning processes and reforms that are happening. You can go to our website and download our briefing note. You can look at videos like these and you can get a range of resources both from the planning department's website, from the EDO website and from community groups in your local area. It's also an opportunity to talk to your local council, find out if they're running uh, seminars on the planning system and they can give you uh, a bit more of an overview of how it will apply in your particular circumstances. And EDO New South Wales will be there to provide support on that basis as well.